Hi, it's The Wire. It's October 4th, 2024. This is a members-only video for premium subscribers who understand no risk it, no biscuit. Let's talk about the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship fight between Bakram Mutazaliev, we'll call him Bakram, and Tim Zhu. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the bet I like here, because it's a casino mispricing in my eyes, is to take the underdog. He's a big underdog, the champion, the IBF junior middleweight champion, backroom, simply to win at a plus 450. This is a guy with much better defense than Sebastian Fundora, the guy who gave Tim Zhu his first loss, who just had a shootout with Tim Zhu. The hedge is Tim Zhu by KO at a minus 120. Understand, Bakram is the bigger fighter, right? He's a six-footer. Zhu is less than 5'9". So Zhu is going to be trying to pot shot Bakram, who, believe it or not, is going to want this fight to take place in the pocket. It's going to be Tim Zhu, who's going to be more episodic, and is going to be trying to throw punches from long range. Let's talk about Bakram's fight style. He's an excellent fighter, folks. He keeps his hands up for defense. In fact, what I want people to do He's predominantly a two-handed hooker. But what I want people to do is to watch his hands. This is the guy who is not relying on either hand speed, and he has decent hand speed, not top end, but he's also not relying on reflexes. And that's very important here. This is the guy who is relying on technique. So rather than bend at the waist, rather than swivel his upper body to avoid shots, this is the guy who has a hand between you and him. What that means is he's not going to get fainted out of his shoes. Right? He always has hands up for defense. He's more of a counter hook artist than he is a lead puncher. So I believe his real game is to figure out your punch pattern to load up on shots. When you throw, he blocks it. Then he starts a hook combination. He throws punches in bunches. He doesn't look like a combination puncher, but that's what he is. right? Let me say he wants to trade with you. The reason being, he has the edge defensively. He's the tall guy who gives away his height. So we're going to get a pocket here. And I believe that pocket is going to increase the odds that somebody gets stopped. Let me also point out, too, that Backroom, like Vitaly Klitschko, that's the person to think about has a deceptive center of gravity. In fact, both of these guys do. But Backroom even more so. He has a deceptive center of gravity that makes his big punches. And he's a puncher. Right? He just stopped Jack Koke. But how he throws the punch... It makes his big punches look like arm punches. The way you can tell that he's actually a big hitter is by looking at his opponent. Right? Koke had faster hand speed than him. Now, that's a little troubling because Koke's 39 years old. Koke had faster hand speed than him. Koke was coming forward. I believe Kalke must have looked at films and thought, this guy's an arm puncher. 
I can jump in the pocket. I can smother this guy. Let me just say, um, Backroom slowly wears down Coke because Backroom is very accurate with his counters and his defense paid dividends. Right, Coke at the end of that fight is finished. He falls into the ropes really more out of exhaustion than getting hit with any big shots. Right, so I get the feeling in this fight, Tim Zhu is going to be the pot shotter. I believe the taller backroom is going to be the one trying to create the pocket. Is going to be the one trying to get inside of five eight and a half Tim Zhu's reach. I think you're going to have a shootout. If Zhu is smart, he's going to realize that this guy has above average defense, so he's can't rely on winning the fight on the scorecards. Zhu ultimately is going to have to go for the knockout. Right? Let me point out too that with big guys, you think you can hit them in the body. Right? A guy like Zhu might look at this guy's body and think, hey, let me get close enough so I can hit him to the body. Throwing hooks to the body, which Tim Zhu likes to do, is perilous against an opponent like this. Because the opponent wants you close to him. Right? When you're throwing hooks, you have to be close to the guy. Unless you have that rear hook that has ring coverage. Right? What Tim Zhu is going to have to do is he's going to have to throw jabs to Backroom's body. He's going to have to get in and get out. The problem with that, and it's a big problem here, is that the champion coming into the fight, which is taking place in Florida, not Australia, right? Neither guy is the home country fighter. The fighter coming into the fight with the title is going to be backroom. So Tim Zhu can't afford to not have offense. He can't afford to be a body-punching pot shotter. He's going to have to step in the pocket, and he's going to have to trade with back room. This is a dangerous fight. Now, the public doesn't know who back room is, so they have him, an unbeaten champion, at a plus 450. Our goal here with this betting strategy is to get a taste of the plus 450 while having a hedge that takes us all the way to the end of the 12th round. But I need for folks to understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance and if the overwhelming favorite, Tim Zhu, wins the fight by decision, you lose it all. And let me point out that that's a big hole in the bet. Don't bet too much money on this. Because Backroom is a guy who really doesn't get his knockouts until the later part of the fight. He stops Kulke in the 11th round. Right? Tim Zhu, of course, against high volume Sebastian Fundora went the distance. Right? So just understand, both of these guys have experience in the later rounds, there is a distinct possibility that this fight goes the distance, but I need for folks to recognize that both of these guys have punches, both of these guys have knockout ratios of greater than 70%. So don't bet the store on this fight, but if you are going to bet on this fight, I like the underdog at plus 450, right? This is really a structured play to get exposure to the plus 450. And I'll hedge that with Tim Zhu, the overwhelming favorite, by stoppage at a minus 120. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.